hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we will continue our discussion with uh, process control and uh, instrumentation so far we have covered uh, basic introductory concepts related to uh, what is process control and uh, what are the various uh, you know parts of uh, this whole subject how it can be divided into various categories we also discuss some uh, basic examples uh, explaining how process control and instrumentation works in uh, getting the desired output from a process and uh, also we discussed about some basic control mechanisms that are employed while using the process control loop we discussed about in, in short we discussed about open loop and closed loop systems about uh, servo and regulatory control feedback and feed forward control in short we just discussed so in this video we are going to discuss about an important concept about uh, the control mechanism the basic one but very important one which is the open loop and closed loop systems so uh, we have also covered it in the control system section but here we'll discuss it from the point of view of process control okay there we just discuss the you know the mathematical from the mathematical point of view we discuss here we'll discuss it from the practical point of view okay the open loop system so we know that uh, anything where a control system is employed it is basically a process which is a series of actions a number of operations producing an end result so a process has an input and an output so when there is no feedback path from the output to the input the output is not measured it is not compared with a reference value called as the set point and the only thing that is involved here is we have to give the input and get the output and just hope that the output will be uh, close to the desired value we are not measuring it we are not uh, checking it continuously we are not comparing it with uh, our reference standard what uh, we want so we are just giving the input getting the output and just hoping that the output sh should be close or would it 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 it, uh, it is close to the set point so that is an open loop system so such a system has uh, the following characteristic features the first and most important one is that it does not have a feedback path feedback path from output to the input connecting the output to the input no measurement of the output no comparison of the output with a reference value so control action is independent of the desired output that's what i was saying that here we are not measuring the output we are not comparing the output with a reference value and then on the basis of that comparison the error signal that we get that is used by the controller to adjust the input so that the output goes close to the reference value that is not done here so basically here the process involves that we are giving the input getting the output so as uh, there is no feedback path so the amount of uh, components the circuitry that will be less so it will be simple in design and as the components are less it will be less costly and installation process will be simple so such systems do not require that much of a maintenance because it is the feedback that involves that constitutes bulk of the components the circuitry that is occupied by the feedback so if there is no feedback at all then all of these things will go out of the picture okay so that's why from the point of view of economics it is less costly it is very simple in design installation is simple and less maintenance is required but the demerit is that 
we do not have any control over the output it means whatever output is given by the system we have to accept it we cannot do anything about it now the closed loop system it's a basic and fundamental difference between the two here there is a feedback path from the output to the input and it has a controller block in between it so here what is done is that the output is continuously monitored with the help of various sensors as per requirement the output is measured compared with the set point or reference value there is a summer block also here but I have not included it I have just used the controller only so the output is measured continuously with the help of a suitable sensor or transducer that value is compared with the reference value which is called as the set point which is the uh, the the value of output which we want those two values are compared and depending on the error or the difference or the gap between the two the controller adjusts the input in a suitable way so that the output goes close to the set point value it may never be equal to the set point value we may never get the output exactly as we want but it will be close to this value the desired value so the the job of the control system as i have already said is to minimize the gap between the actual value and the desired value or to minimize the gap between expectation and reality okay so to minimize that gap that is the job of the process control loop the control system block okay to minimize the gap between our expectations and the real value that we are getting okay so the characteristic feature of uh, the closed loop system it will just be the opposite of that of the open loop system so it has a feedback path from output to input as you can see here because of this feedback path the circuitry the amount of components it will increase and uh, as a result it will become much complex in design complicated circuitry it will be costly more number of components more the cost installation will be difficult and maintenance will be required at regular intervals otherwise the components the circuitry it will get damaged so here the control action is aimed at achieving the desired output which is defined by the reference value output is continuously monitored with the help of suitable sensors or transducers and it is compared with the value which we want which is defined by the set point which acts as a reference depending on the difference between the two the controller with the help of suitable mechanisms actuators it uh, manipulates the input so that the output is close to the set point value okay minimizing the gap between actual output and desired output okay so let us uh, analyze this with the help of some examples suppose we have a traffic control system now most of the traffic uh, lights that we see they just operate on a simple algorithm a program is uh, installed that uh, the lights will change at regular intervals you know after a certain period of time the lights will change from red to yellow to green like that now most of the traffic control uh, the traffic control systems they do not take any you know surrounding feedback or any other parameters into consideration such as uh, what is the volume of the traffic at that instant whether it is high or low what time it is whether it is early morning where and and that case uh, the uh, traffic is usually less because less number of people go outside whether it is in the you know uh, in the mid midday where the rush is high or also during the evening and uh, when the traffic is high or it is at night late night so it does not take any other parameters into consideration so it just 
operates on the program which is installed that it has to change light at regular intervals after a certain period of time defined in seconds. So if we design, this is an example of an open loop system. It has no feedback path because it is not considering any surrounding feedback. But if we design a traffic control system which takes into account the traffic volume with the help of suitable sensors which measure the, you know, we can use uh, various uh, techniques with the help of uh, there are various examples such as uh, we can use motion sensors or pressure sensors or Doppler effect sensors there are various that is very complicated so I'm not going into that right now so in order to determine how many cars or how many vehicles are there on the road depending on that it will uh, adjust the duration between the changing of lights or at what time uh, the process is going on whether it is early morning or midday or uh, evening or late night so if it takes all of that into account and we have programmed it in that way then it will become a closed loop system so that will be a little bit difficult it will become costly more circuitry will be required so that is the example of a simple difference between open loop and closed loop system similarly if we consider a lighting system uh, basically if uh, the, the, the lighting system which we have in our house we have to open it and we turn it on and off as per our requirement it is not happening automatic but if we uh, install uh, automatic lighting system in such a way that uh, after a certain duration it will automatically get turned off or it will automatically get turned on that will simply either we are doing it by ourselves or it will it is happening automatically then it will become an open loop system but if it takes into consideration various other parameters such as the time of the day so we if we use a photo detector which detects the intensity of sunlight during the daytime the traffic uh, the lights in our house it will be off because the photo detector will detect the sunlight send the signal to the microcontroller so the microcontroller obviously has a set point intensity of light if that uh, signal is uh, above or below a certain level the microcontroller will issue a signal with the help of a actuator to turn the light off during the daytime and as uh, the evening approaches the photo detector signal the microcontroller the set point value will detect whether the signal from the detector is high or low enough to turn the light on so during the evening the lights will get automatically turned on and during early morning or as the morning approaches the lights will get off so here we are taking feedback, surrounding feedback, environmental feedback, that is the sunlight. So if we employ this mechanism, it will become a closed loop system. By when we do it manually or it just gets turned on and off uh, after a certain period of time, then it becomes an open loop system. Another example is that uh, during cloudy days, you know, sometimes uh, sunlight is very low even during the daytime. So at that point also even it is during the day time and uh, the intensity of sunlight is very less the microcontroller will detect that and it will issue a signal to turn the light on so that is that that becomes a closed loop system because it is taking the feedback so this is a simple example of a open loop system and a closed loop system which takes into account the various other factors and takes it as feedback to execute a process in a better way. So here we have discussed uh, the open loop and uh, closed loop system with the help of some basic examples, simple examples. So I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel Engineering Tutorial for more such videos related to electrical, electronics, instrumentation and communication engineering. Have a great day. Thank you very much.